All right, welcome back to Noob School. Hey, this is where we interview great salespeople and figured out how they got started and started to build their career. Today, I have another great friend, one of my all-time favorites, Mark Smith here. Mark, welcome aboard. John, it's great to be here, man. Great. So, Mark, where are you now? So, I am at uh, Cisco Systems now. Cisco, is that like the number one company Supplying the internet? Yeah, we are. And uh, it's a phenomenal company. And uh, I tell you, uh, really happy to be there. Very lucky to be a part of the team there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's a pretty good place to be. Pretty good place to be. Um, well, let's back up. I mean, I, I, I know part of the story because I was involved in the beginning. But <clears throat> let's, what we're trying to help the noobs with is how you got started and how you started this career that ended you up working for companies like ScanSource and Cisco, uh, supplying you know some of the greatest companies out there with, with, with all that Cisco does. Um, back to when you were their age, you went to Clemson and you majored in economics. I would say economics slash business. And tell us about the journey from there into getting into what your whole career has been, which is technology sales. Yeah, well, you know, it. I got got out of school. Uh, actually, went to work uh, with my dad. He had an advertising company, yeah. and uh, so I did that for a couple of years. Decided that probably wasn't quite right for me, mm -hmm. and I think this was in the eighties. Mm -hmm. I'm going to date myself a little bit, but uh, this was kind of when you know the whole uh, computer industry was kind of really yeah. growing, yeah. And especially getting in, into business. Right. And uh, you know, DataStream uh, had a had an ad, yeah. And uh, so I responded to it. And uh, at that time, I came in kind of l working as a marketing kind of mm -hmm. guy, mm -hmm. helping you guys. And uh, I remember you came to me and said, "Hey, you know what? Are you, are you interested in going into sales?" Yeah. And I was like, "I've never done it, but uh, hey, I'll I'll try it." And it sounded like a great opportunity, and mm -hmm. wound up being really changing, I think, the course of my life and mm -hmm. career mm -hmm. because, you know, I've been in, in that field ever since. Right. And it was just, to me, it was an incredibly positive uh, way to get in. And it was a, a great experience. And right. I've, I've been doing it ever since. Right. So <clears throat> technology sales. Um, why, why would you say that that is, is such a good thing to be doing versus um, selling marketing or some other uh, line of business? I, I think, you know, if you look at what I've done uh, over the you know, course of my career, I've, it, it gives you so many options to do different kinds of things within sales. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, start out with software uh, and did that for many, many years, mm -hmm. switched over and started doing a little bit more on the hardware side of things. Uh, when I moved over to ScanSource, mm -hmm. uh, worked directly with end users, uh, you know, as software, mm -hmm. then started working with the channel yeah. and partners now with ScanSource and Cisco. So mm -hmm. it just gives you a, a tremendous number of options mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking to do something and you want to change a little bit but still not lose you know, what you've learned. Yeah. Uh, you know, technology sales is, is tremendous. Mm -hmm. And it's going to continue to be a phenomenal uh, direction for, for people getting yeah. into a career. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you. I, I feel like, you know, neither of us is super technical. You're more technical than I am. But, yeah. um, you know, a, a, anyone who can understand it enough to, to figure out what a client's problem is and, that, you know, figure out a way to fix it using the tech people, right, to yep. actually solve it, yep. you know, that that's going to be a, a high-paying High demand job for a long time. Absolutely, like you said. I mean, you don't have to be the most technical person, yeah. you know, in the room to yeah. to be very successful. Right. What you have to do is under, like you say, understand the issues with your customer mm -hmm. or your partner that you're working with, and then lean on the team of of you know the technical experts. Mm -hmm to help you with those situations. Right. And that's what you learn when you go through. I probably got less technical. It's funny, over <laughs> the, on my, the course of my career, yeah. number one, the technology is just a lot more right. uh, you know, involved yeah. and, and uh, it's, not, it's not as simple as it used to be. But you also learn that you know, that's not really what I need to focus on. I need to focus on those relationships and those things yeah. that, uh, that really matter and looking after 
my end user or my partner. That's a great point. You know, you mentioned a couple of things in there. We should probably unwind a little bit for for the folks <coughs> watching or listening. You talked about going from direct sales is where you started. You know, you get a lead, you call them up, you qualify them, you try to sell them some software. And eventually you got to managing a channel where you had you know, a large number of people out in the field that had their own businesses and you were managed selling your stuff through them. Tell us a little bit about the difference between your direct selling and managing a channel. Yeah, it, that's, a, that's a great question. And, you know, when you're involved with the direct channel, you know, you're, you're very involved in specific things that the, that, that, you know, end user yeah. is looking for. And when you're talking to a partner, there are a myriad of things that you've got to be very aware of. You've got to be aware of what their business model is. Mm -hmm. You've got to be aware of how they go to market. You've got to be aware of how much profitability they're making uh, on the deals because you've got to work with them. They've got a lot of choices as a, as a partner mm -hmm. uh, out there, and you've got to really position your technology solution in a way that makes it so they want to work with you. And it's an <laughs> ongoing relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not a, hey, I'm going to sell you this, mm -hmm. and then you know I'll check back it with you in six months. Yeah. It's continuous. Yeah. You know, you've got to always be working with those guys uh, in the indirect channel and the partner community to see about well, how can we get you to grow your business. And so when you – at ScanSource, I know you got into that. You went, you went data stream, scan source, Cisco. Right. So Mark has essentially had three jobs since Clemson, three, you know, serious longer term jobs, all three technology companies. Mm -hmm. uh, two of them started here in Greenville, and then Cisco is, is the biggest, uh, strongest of the three. It's an amazing company. Um, but how many people could, how many partners? Or, or in the channel, could you manage at one time per person? So it, it really depends on your level of involvement with okay. the partner, okay. right? So, you know, with uh, when I was with uh, ScanSource, I would typically have, I would say, you know, uh, 100 to 150, maybe 200 partners that I work with uh, wow. primarily. Wow. Uh, with Cisco, that number's a lot larger mm -hmm. just because of the way it's, wow. it's structured. So I may interact with, you know, four or 500 partners uh, over the course of a year uh, in that situation. So your level of involvement is going to be a little different on each partner, obviously. Yeah. You know, so you've got some some bigger partners that you're working with very in-depth mm -hmm. with. Then you've got other partners who are maybe new. And so your level of involvement may be, you know, very high in the beginning, but then you kind of, you know, let them kind of go and work and become, you know, more successful <clears throat> and give them the right resources to go to. Yeah. So yeah. it really kind of depends on the partner and their and their involvement. <laughs> uh, really, but but it, it's a it can be a high number. Now there are some people who only focus on a handful. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, you know, in the jobs that I've had, mm -hmm. I've had a lot of uh, a lot of partners. Yeah, and that would be with. a difference between. Tier one yep. bars and tier two and tier yeah, three. And, exactly. Um, exactly. Interesting. Interesting. It is different. Interesting. Okay. Tell us this. What was something that you thought in your mind about sales before you started in sales that turned out to be wrong? Yeah. I, you know, I think I probably, like a lot of people, just, you know, had the old image of the used car yeah. salesman. Yeah. You know, I've got to figure out a way to somehow – you know, sweet talk them into, uh, you know, doing a deal or I've got to, you know, you know, <laughs> trick you know, them somehow, trick them somehow, yeah. or, you know, uh, you know, offer a sweet price and that's the way they buy it. Yeah. And obviously when you get into it, you know, it's, it's so much different than that. Yeah. And it's really, uh, to me, a uh, much more, uh, involved, uh, from a, a standpoint of building those relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the that's the year I think people don't probably or, or have never been in sales and don't realize is so important. Mm -hmm. You know, is is how do you connect with that person? How do you connect with them on an individual basis and, mm -hmm. and listen to them mm -hmm. and understand really what it is they're looking for and what is it they need, you know, and yeah. and tailor, you know, your message and your communication to them around that, not just some pre planned spiel on, you know, why this is the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. 
I agree. I think we all start, not all, but almost all of us start very transactional. Right. You know, you're under pressure to sell so much this month and you're calling people and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we, we graduate over time, or at least the, the best salespeople I talk to graduate to that doctor-patient relationship where there's true trust right. and you're like, we're here to figure out what's going on and see if we can fix it for you. Yeah. You know, that's it. Yeah, and, and, abs- and, and absolutely. And we'll agree on how much that's worth to you. And if it's not, then, you know, we'll go talk, we'll have the next patient come in. You yeah. know I mean? We don't have to do this deal. Right. And, you know, as soon as someone crosses into that zone, the customers can sense it. Oh, yeah. Right? They know now that Mark's not here just to jam them for the end of the month special. Yeah. Although we did that. No. Few, yeah. <laughs> no, we, we do that on occasion. We no did, go question. We did the introductory special, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what really turned it around for me, John. So I was at Data Stream, you yeah. know, starting out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I struggled a little bit for those first few months, man, you know, so because I was brand new. And yeah. so I would go around and I would try to listen to people yeah. and figure out how they did. And I, yeah. Man, I, I, I remember coming into your office and listening to you so many times because you were so good about creating that that rapport mm-hmm. with these guys. And these were maintenance guys, yeah. right? Yeah. Maintenance guys, plant engineers. A lot of them really didn't know a lot about, you know, software mm-hmm. or even computers. Yeah. But you had such a great rapport with them. And uh, so what I tried to do, I didn't try to, like, emulate you because you're you mm-hmm. and you have your own style. Mm-hmm. But things really turned around for me mm-hmm. when I figured out, you know, I need to be an advocate for these guys. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I'm not just selling them right. software. I need to be because when they incorporated our software mm-hmm. in a computer, it really raised the level of their status within the company. Yes. You know, I yes. mean, these were just maintenance guys. Right. You know, and they were like, hey, call mm-hmm. Joe down here when something breaks. Yeah. But, you know, when I started to listen to them and take, you know, their position, mm-hmm. And say, you know what? These guys, you know, deserve a chance to be able to improve yeah. their position, not yeah. only with what we do as a software company, but really their their status within the company. That really changed it for me. I felt like, and after that point, you know, it was so good. It was so much fun to talk to these guys mm-hmm. and know I'm not just going to sell them software. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to help them really improve their work experience. Yeah and their status yeah. within the company organization. Yeah. And that was so much fun because that's that's just an added bonus. You're helping these guys. Absolutely. And you're 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 really doing more than just getting a PO. <clears throat> yeah. You know, because that leads to having that relationship and the guys on the other end can sense that. Absolutely. You know, they, if they can, don't have a PO. Let's just use what today's date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> All the old tricks are coming oh, out. Man. We had a, we had a few of the oh old LOI or oh you gosh. know letter of intent or whatever. Oh gosh, yeah. horrible, horrible. <laughs> Statute of limitations has expired. That's right. Um, well, that's great. I, I you figured it out early then. You know, you figured that out early because I'm sure you do that with people with Cisco and with ScanSource. Oh, like sure. You're, yeah, you're, you're the advocate for these people. You're helping them in the maintenance people, for example. They, you know, they went from you know Joe to go. F- fix the the, the the leaky faucet to, you know, the board of directors now is demanding a, a readiness yeah. of, of the assets, you know, are they being taken care of or not? Cause it's a lot of money. Oh man. I mean, yeah, that whole, you know, the whole business has changed yeah. now and it's all, you know, enterprise asset management yeah. now. Yeah. And yeah, you've got to re- produce reports and how much downtime and how much has this cost yeah. us safety. You know, oh yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you remember your Colby numbers? I don't. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I mean, I remember, you know, doing the tests and yeah. everything. I don't recall what I they re- were. I remember that. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I remember it said you were like super steady. You know, that yeah. you were like super steady. That's and, probably and, true. And that is a, a wonderful thing <clears throat> for what you've been doing. I mean, you just, you just, you know, keep, keep after it day after day, you know, working, working with these these clients and these resellers, it's, it's awesome. Well, I remember when you asked me to do this, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I had to kind of go back and think about, you know, what I've done over the years yeah. and, you know, some, obviously some things that didn't work and some things that worked. But for me, 
it was always a matter of, look, you're going to have days, you know, in a, as a, in a salesperson's life, you're yeah. going to have days where it just feels like, man, nothing's working. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm getting no every time I turn around, yeah. right? Yeah. But, you know, if you do the right things and have the right habits every single day, yeah. it's going to come out. It will. It, 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 you know, you're going to have days where it's it's like, am I – What's wrong? You know, yeah. what, what am I doing? Yeah. But, you know, if you have the right habits and you know that what you're doing is is the right thing, yeah. it's going to work out for you. Well, <clears throat> tell me, tell us um, some of the, the other good decisions that you would pass on to the noobs, things that you did well in your career that got you to where you are now. Yeah. I would say, you know, always treat people with respect and, uh, you know, there, there are going to be uh, times when there are people that you don't necessarily agree with. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's not, there's nothing wrong with stating your opinion and things like that. But, uh, you know, always have, have a, 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 a genuine amount of respect for people. Mm -hmm. And I think they, they can sense that. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have customers sometimes or partners that don't you know, don't like about what to happen to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And you've got to have some uncomfortable, you know, conversations sometimes. Yeah. But if you're respectful to them and uh, they can sense that in a professional manner, that will help, you know, you get through that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is just always look for ways to improve what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Don't don't get complacent, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're riding high sometimes, yeah. and man, you know, I've – I'm just killing my numbers yeah. and it's it's great. You know, there's there's ways that you can improve, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. You know, if you just sit down and think about it, always be looking to see if, what it is. Maybe it's a different process. Maybe it's the way that I, you know, am getting uh, information to my customers or my partners. Uh, but always be looking for ways mm -hmm. to improve that because there's always things – uh, that we can do a little bit different. And the other thing I would say that helped me tremendously is don't think you know it all. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. go go around and listen and, and talk to other people. <clears throat> I know for me, especially in the beginning at DataStream, it was tremendous to, to work with you mm -hmm. and other people like Mike Cannon. The Reverend. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, uh, Bill Hedgepath, Mark yeah. Vetzel. Yeah. They, everybody had their own style. And I would I would love to listen to these guys because I would pick up a little few little things here yeah. and there, right? Yeah. You know, I wasn't trying to emulate everybody, but I would I would listen to them and I would I would like, oh, you know what? I love the way he kind of phrased that or said that. And we were doing obviously over the phone sales mm -hmm. and it was very important to be able to convey what you're you're wanting uh in a in a good manner. But I I just loved picking up different things like yeah. that. That's great. It's a great one. Um, I think is uh, <clears throat> you know the, the continual improvement uh, as a salesperson or manager is like I'm going to get you know try to get one percent better every day or every week and how that piles up. And I'll tell you what Mark Mark does a great job at this. But what I see other salespeople fall into is a trap of oh man why they screw up our comp plan. And oh, if they just had the new product out, you know, or the marketing plan's no good, and they start to look at what the company's doing or what the economy's doing instead of what they can do for themselves. Right. If you're at a company and you keep making yourself better and better and better and better, and that company really is screwed up, then you'll just go somewhere else. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, you have to kind of you know separate what's under your control and what isn't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, focus on what you can control. There are, you know, times when you just can't control, you know, what the economy is doing. Right. 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 But you still have to go in there and, you know, make sure you're doing everything. You may have to switch switch methods a little bit yeah. or strategies a little bit. But, yeah. I think the know. question there is, I think it's a wonderful point, Mark. You know, when these things happen, when something really bad happens, your customer, you know, company's getting bought or economy crap, whatever it is. The question is, what are we going to do? Exactly. What are we going to do? Yeah. I mean, w w when the when, when the economy crashed in 2008, a friend of mine was a, like a fundraiser for uh, so, some college up in Virginia. 
I mean, he's going around trying to get people to give money. And I mean, we didn't know if the world was going to survive. Yeah. And so what did he do? He went ahead and made his rounds and visited all the big donors and said, I'm not coming for money. I want to give you an update on how this is impacting the school. And we'll talk about money next year. Yeah. Just like gave them a, a way out. Right. But stayed in touch. Yeah. And you know all those people so much appreciated that. Oh, yeah. So the next year, you know, cha-ching. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a good one. That's a really good one. Um, is there one thing you wish you'd have known when you started that you could pass on to the the listeners? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, the one thing that, that I would, uh, you know, probably wish I had known before going into sales was that, you know, what a huge, to me, personal impact it had on really how I treated other people in other aspects of my life. Hmm. So to me, you know, with sales, you have to kind of bring your yourself out of your shell a little bit mm -hmm. in, yeah. in order to be good at being relating with people. Yeah. I tell you, John, I think that really helped me in my personal relationships with everybody else right. that when I wasn't at work, mm -hmm. you know, it, it really, it gave me an opportunity because I think normally I'm kind of, you know, I kind of grew up as kind of a, a shy person. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't the most natural thing in the world for mm -hmm. me to just go out, yeah. you know, and yeah. talk to people. My mom was the ex exact opposite. Mm -hmm. She was a phenomenal, you know, outward mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. But for me, you know, being in sales really helped me kind of come out and really uh, work with people and and really interact with them in a much more positive way. Good. And give you a more positive outlook on life. Right. I, really I love it. That's a great answer. I mean, between interacting with strangers, public speaking, asking hard exactly. questions. I mean. Yeah. You yeah. just, you, you realize, oh, you know what? I, I used to not do this yeah. when I would sit there and talk to a family member or yeah. friend or whatever. But, you know, with, with having that sales background, it you really get into, un, you know, really wanting to find out about people mm -hmm. and what's going on with their lives. Yeah. And, and you're not really also always thinking about yourself all the time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that's easy, know. easy for us to do. I block off 10% of my time for other people. <laughs> um, here's a good one. What's your favorite word? Favorite word? Uh, man. I don't know. I'm going to say this is this is going to sound kind of crazy, but I'm going to say my favorite word is yes. Yes. Nice. And the reason that is is because, you know, we live in, in such a world where there are so many, you know, bad things going on all yeah. the time. Yeah. And it's easy to just sit down if you watch the news or – you get wrapped up in things and real, you know, and, and it's easy to think, God, you know, this is, yeah. it's going downhill, baby, you know, <laughs> and, and it ain't looking good. But, you know, if you just keep that word, yes, and there are so, and it has an impact, not only on how you see the world, but how the pe you know, people that you interact with work mm -hmm. with you and just having that positive you know, mental attitude. Yeah. I think we used to talk about that. PMA. Yeah, yeah PMA. Pos positive yeah. mental attitude all the yeah. time. Yeah. And uh, going back to the old Zig Ziglar Absolutely. You know, yeah. days. And and I think sometimes, you know, we kind of get over a little bit of that, get a little cynical. Yeah. But that still drives a lot of what happens mm -hmm. in this world. If you look at the people who are successful, they maintain that positive energy, man. Right, right. It's not, it's not easy. It's not going to be easy all the time. You it's go through some easy. tough, yeah, it's tough areas. But man, I think that's uh, yeah, that's that to me makes a big. I difference. think it's great. I love the word yes, and I'll keep the conversation going a little bit because I think, you know, every time something happens or if you say something to me, I basically have three choices. The first choice is to say, "Oh man, you say it's raining outside. That's going to be that's going to be great when it clears up later. It's going to be beautiful. It'll be perfect." Or I could say, oh, number two, neutral. I could say, that's interesting. Huh, nothing, just kind of neutral. Or I could say, oh, my God, it's raining. It's going to be so slippery on the way. How can it hurt my, you know, the car could spin out of control. <laughs> Every single time we have that choice. Yeah. And all those th three things are kind of true. Yeah. So it's just which one are you going to on purpose focus yeah. on? Yeah. And, right. and then people will then people will say, well, you're just you know you'll never talk about the name. I'm like, no, no, 
You want to talk about a hard thing, I'm happy to. Let's just call a timeout and talk about it. But let's don't talk about it when you bring up the rain. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, I know your Clemson Tigers a couple of years ago, they lost – they lost to like Boston College or someone early in the season. Yeah, and and, and I was like, you know, I'm a Gamecock fan. I saw Hector, <laughs> saw our friend Hector. I'm like, oh yeah, what happened to the Tigers? And just within minutes of them losing, I saw or talked to him on text, and he's like, he's like, oh, you know what? <clears throat> we lost early enough that if we went out and so and so loses, we'll still be in the Final Four and we can win the national championship. <laughs> I mean, that was his answer right. within minutes of losing. Yeah. And that's, I think that's where we want to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to get there yeah. sometimes, you know, because, yeah. yeah. you know, I like, you know, this is a little tough season for us this year. But, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I've told my son, he's, he's, you know, he's like me, he's a big Clemson guy. And, uh, you know, we've had uh, a couple of losses this year already. But uh, I said, look, you know, this is, this is sometimes how you get better, man. Right. You know, it's uh, it's not always gloom and doom. It's there's always a, a way to get uh, right. get something positive out of what's happened. Good. You know. So Good. well, I'm uh, I'm so happy you were able to, to to be here today and that we met thirty years ago. Oh man, yeah, this would have been eighty eight. I can't even so, do the man. Yeah, I know. That's what I was gonna say. That's uh, twenty some twenty five. I don't know. Yeah. Let's 88. See, 12, yeah, no, 20, 12, 29. Yeah, almost 30. Or, yeah, they're almost 30. Yeah. So, anyway, that's, that, you know yeah. you have a good friend when you've been friends that long. Absolutely. Uh, well, well, Mark, really proud of you from where you started to your great career at ScanSource to being at the finest company in the Internet right now, Cisco. Good example for folks listening, and uh, glad to have you. Thank you, John. Thank okay, you for brother. having me, man. Thank you. It's always good to see you. All right. Hey, it's John here. Thanks for listening today. Please check out noobschool.org. That's my website. That's where we have other videos and content that can help you get started in sales.